Okay, I just bought a product that I have no idea if it'll work on my car, but uh, I'm gonna do a zero to 60 on my blazer and uh, see how she goes. And I'll use the clock as my timer on my phone. Ready and go. So I got something that looks cool, but most likely will probably do nothing. It is a throttle body spacer. Check it out. It's red, so that'd be cool. I'm gonna try it, test it out on my uh, black blazer. Uh, supposedly, if it does make any horsepower, it'll be three to four horsepower and uh, fuel economy, I don't know. And uh, I'll stick it on the red one, uh, just because it'll be red and it'll be cool. But uh, most likely it's probably not going to do anything because fuel is not mixed in the throttle body. It's not a TBI, it's not a carburetor, which spacers do work because it gives a little more area in the plenum for the uh, air and gas mixture to mix and uh, to become a better mixture by the time it reaches the cylinders. Anyways, what we have here is probably the biggest downfall of the S10. It, inside their intake, the plenum, you have your spider injector. It's right here. And that's inside. And then all the spider injectors go off to each cylinder. Okay, so matter of fact, I have an extra one. So this is the intake of uh, the uh, Vortec S10. And I'll show you the fuel injection. Okay, so this is the fuel injection. And then these are the your uh, intake air ports that go right through there um actually that is pretty big for a uh, v6 um that's interesting but uh the injection is right there so this is where it starts for number two that's where the air goes in right into number two so they call it the vortex because it vortex the air supposedly and uh just like if you've seen those water bottles maybe i'll put a, a video here real quick we can kind of see water bottles with the water goes through it much faster flow if it's a vortex or it's spinning versus just going through. Um, so this, the only possible thing that I can see that this may work, see, what do they call it? The laminar and turbulent airflow. Uh, turbulent airflow, that's the two types of airflows. Uh, laminar just kind of goes, you know, just kind of, out there turbulent you know what i mean it's really turbulent mixes everything um turbulent airflow is extremely complicated with all different kinds of velocities um that's why they have scientists that do it with with the aircraft and things so this here supposedly see those grooves supposedly it's going to make a vortex or help with the spinning um of the air so it i don't know it's supposedly going to get more air quicker and faster in the intake um so as i said there's no air there's no fuel mixing so i seriously doubt that that'll do anything but i have seen intakes that have larger plenums create more uh horsepower so if anything i'll do a giant if that this added space here might help a little bit because there's more air inside here to be sucked down more throttle response in the very beginning uh hopefully and then uh, also what i've done and uh i've cut out that little groove uh, it's, i don't know about a groove but it's a little uh dish so you'll get more airflow through that and uh, actually this is a 75 millimeter throttle body and for six cylinders or a 4.2, it's actually uh, really comparable to a uh, 90 millimeter throttle body on a 6.0 uh, LS engine. So, so long story short, there's plenty of opportunity for air to flow through. I mean, it is it is 
good for the engine. Um, let's just see if uh, this helps it out. So we'll go from there. Okay, so it's in. Uh, that's what it looks like. It came with a couple little spacers, like down here you got to put on for your funnel cable. But, uh, and then some extended bolts there. But that's it. Doesn't run too bad for 230,000 miles. Let's see how she can, if there's any performance increase. Okay, same road, same elevation, same temperature, a uh, little bit of moisture in the air. And uh, let's see how she does the zero to 60 this time. Let me uh, stop and then go. Let's uh, break down the numbers and I'll time it and we'll see what it is. So this final verdict on this throttle body spacer is it doesn't really do anything. I didn't notice anything, but I think it was possibly because of my EGR valve it used to be right there. I removed it and uh, took this off at the same time, swapped out my alternator with my race one it was squeaking real bad and did new pulleys and uh, a new belt and i did all that because it was squeaking and i just couldn't stand it anymore anyways let's try this uh, egr remove kit and we'll see how, how she drives zero to 60. okay we are up to temperature it's colder out let's see how she does ready and go Let's talk about uh, the shocks. I almost forgot. These shocks are the sickest shocks I have ever seen for the price. Um, they are basically half the price of, uh, of like a King shock, for example. It is a, a two and a half inch, um, I guess you'd call it a sleeve or main. It is a coilover shock. But the reason why I got a coilover, even though I'm not running coilovers, is because it's built beefier, as in the thicker model, and the length that I needed wasn't offered in the smooth body. Uh, and so I, I, I purchased this one. But with that also said, I mean, for resale value, um, the coilover is much better. You can change these little rubber balls, or, or uh, I guess you'd say these are the bump stops if you, if you needed them. And uh, this is that sleeve I was telling you about that is uh, five eighths, and it's a bigger bolt than a standard shock. And so I'll need to machine those out. But these are just a misalignment spacers that go in there. Um, but that's it. I mean, it's Pearl Fender is what it is. It's made in I believe Thailand, uh, but. Uh, I've read some reviews and they're pretty sick for their price and they, their reservoir. I mean, this stuff is pretty, pretty heavy duty stuff. I'm, I'm very impressed. And this is a 14 inch travel shock. So overall body length, I believe is like a 36. And then uh, when it compresses, it's a 24. So those are just the dimensions on that. And they are tunable and I'll be able to tune those when I get to the uh, to the lake bed, and I believe they are a, a nitrogen filled um, uh, shock, but uh, anyways, figure out. Oh, there's a part number, I guess. There, if you want to look it up. But uh, there you go. Okay, this is a pretty productive day. I moved both sides forward um, I could probably move that axle back um, a little bit it's basically centered 
I guess we'll see what happens when I put the new tires on, but I do have room to move. I can move it back, whatever that is, two inches. Um, the shackles, my very first shackle I put on, I can now put those on because I moved the axle two inches forward. Those are the old ones, and the shackle is an inch shorter than the other one. So it actually fits perfect. This is ride height, and I have the ballistic fab um, wheel spacer in there. Can you see it? And when you glance up, the front sticks out just a little bit further than the rear. It's exactly what you want. That's it. I'm pretty excited. Well, what do you think of the bumper so far? I got the D-ring hangers on. Um, don't look too close to those welds. Uh, it is better. I'm turning it up hotter. Well, as hot as the uh, roller will go. So, it'll guard my fender. Has a boat side to it. Stainless is a little difficult to weld, but I think I'm getting a handle on it. So my final review on this stainless uh, welding, when I get it really hot, in other words, as hot as that bugger can go, and as fast as it can go, I can get it going very well. See that groove there? Uh, so I welded on all of the insides, but the outside, see that splatter? There's like a little ball that melts and it just drops in. And so since I'm doing that angle, see how it just kind of just drops the balls on the sides? Looks like total crap. So I'm gonna get a bit a grinder and I'm gonna grind absolutely everything on these edges. And I'm gonna make them, you know, round. I thought about, oh, I missed a spot right there, but that's fine because I welded it from the inside. Um, I thought about painting it to cover all my shit welds, but when I grind the crap out of it and roll them over and the inside, oh, that's also another thing. It works really well when you go real thick because of those big balls, you know what I mean? Um, so you go real thick and, and, you know, knit it back and forth and it's fine. But when you do little tiny spot welds and just kind of move that way, I mean, I tried that and it just it splatters everywhere. So you have to go thick. That's the bad thing is there's not like little touch up because it is so hot and feeding so fast, you gotta do thick. Uh, otherwise it looks like total shit. So, but it's really strong. I, it's probably gonna take about 20 grinding wheels to finish this bumper, but. Bumper is done. Did a ton of grinding. Has uh, kind of some boat sides on it. Grinded off all these edges. I think the corner looks pretty sweet and then uh, put a 45 there and uh, bolted it up now I'm gonna weld it up and color good so the other day I was thinking and I swear I had an epiphany I was listening to Richard Holdner and with West Tech and he was talking about intakes and talking about short and long runners and I'm thinking about my intake and I'm like I'm going to make my intake a performance intake. So I grabbed my extra intake. I have an extra one, so it really doesn't matter. I grabbed my grinding wheel and I went to town. So here we are. In Eric Holder's video, he was talking about short and long runners. And in there he was testing like 20 different intakes. And uh, he said that the short runner, that'd be this short now, it was long, uh, is for higher RPM. And I'm thinking, you know, I want to be higher RPM and I want to get more horsepower out of my intake. I mean, heck, I will take off all this material, I'll increase the plenum size and make the runner shorter and I'm going to reap all of these horsepower. Well, my wife came into the garage and it was just filled with this smoke. I mean, you just see the dust everywhere. And she asked me what in the crap I was doing and come in, come to bed. And I did, and I decided to watch that video again. And lo and behold, short runners, that's if this even would have worked, 
is like 7,000 RPM and up, and mainly for drag, drag uh, the drag strip. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want any of that. And I watched on the intakes, they had an LS for a, uh, sorry, the SS intake for the Blazer, and then they had a fast aftermarket intake. And they showed inside the difference between the two and the fast intake for the LS. The runners were like, here, let's go on this end. Because the uh, throttle body's on the front. And when you look inside, you see the runner start here. And it goes up, around, and down. And so I would probably say they were a third longer than these. And it seriously made some good horsepower. And so having longer runners are actually good. And uh, it should be well for the 45 to 5,000 RPM, which is perfect for my cam and everything. So this was just all a big mistake. That was my epiphany. If you haven't already guessed it, but uh, don't do that at home. So, thanks for watching. And uh, my next video, I have a lot of parts coming. Hopefully, I'll have my uh, IFS parts and my shock parts. But I definitely have some performance parts on my engine that I'd like to install and talk about. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.